Hello everyone and welcome to another video uh, update of the Jonas Vingo crash and uh, yeah what an absolutely mess that is for all the riders affected and uh, yeah all us cycling fans obviously really saddened by it but there has been an update from Visma Lisa bike on the Jonas Vingo front and they say as follows it was a nasty crash but fortunately he is stable and conscious examinations at the hospital have revealed that he has a broken collarbone and several broken ribs. He remains in hospital as a precaution. Thank you for all your messages. And this is a huge relief to all Jonas Vingal fans, myself included. Obviously, we all know that. And yeah, there were murmurs quickly spiraling out of control of far serious injuries. Of course, broken bones is not something that is... Yeah, it's going to take a few weeks for that to recover. And I mean... In terms of broken collarbone, it takes between six to eight weeks without surgery complications. And a fully recovery might be 12 months. Uh, they say six to 12 months, but Jonas Bingo is superhuman in terms of being an absolute amazing specimen. All these riders are. So maybe it could be quicker. In terms of the broken ribs, it's saying at least six weeks to heal. And I mean, that combination of collarbones and ribs is not going to make for some great nights of sleep as well. So for Jonas, it's going to be quite, well, I mean, it throws into the question if the Tour de France is even a viable thing this year, and he might just have to go for the welter. Because um, you don't, yeah, you don't want him to go in half fit uh, into the Tour de France. But I mean, yeah, at this point, recovery is more important. Um, glad that he came out of that somewhat. But in terms of the other riders as well, Remco broken collarbone as well. Jay Vine, who was also caught up in it, uh, UAE announced that he suffered a heavy crash during the race and sustained uh, clavicle and two thorax spine vertebrae body fractures. Uh, thankfully, no neurological involvement and there's no major injuries or head trauma. Jay will stay in the hospital for neurological observation. We wait spinal orthopedic assessment and further management. Get well soon, Jay. Yes, that that is a bit of a shame. And I mean, we've also had the... Tra it's not a thing to do with the race, but then a Kemner has also been involved in a crash. Uh, Primus Roglic leaving the race as well. And this... This, yeah, it's just a real shame. But there have been riders, they have been communicating with the press, obviously after the race. Bill Bao said that, well, he was hinting that the racing is a bit different now. They were going very fast downhill. And that also that he knows this area so well, obviously being a Basque rider himself, and said that one of the reasons for the crash was that the road was very bumpy. And because of roots growing out, which obviously is not great. So with added speed, losing control, hence the crash uh, potentially. But yeah, just a shame with that. Skelmos as well, Matthias Skelmos Jensen. He was talking a lot that one of the reasons, well, he mentioned the bumpy roads as well, but saying that the level at the Toro Basque country was so high that there was far more riders after they would do incredible numbers and drop most of the peloton this time instead of 30 being there there would be 60 for example and then that would make it a bit more nervous on this sense so yeah th there was kind of hints that the, the aggressive racing from the riders was a small factor in this as well but obviously bumpy roads aggressive racing downhill isn't a good recipe for anything and uh, yeah, quite interesting, a, a very sad incident for sure. So many riders being affected by this. And I mean, you don't want anyone's season to end with this. Remco was in great form as we saw in Paris-Nice, finishing second overall, having stage wins. Uh, he had won the Volta Algarve. I mean, Roglic was looking great after that stage one victory in the tour of Basque country having that resurgence after his Paris Nice and then Jonas Vingo had been well he's been winning here there and everywhere for the last almost two years so yeah Jonas I can't yeah I said it in the first video I can't remember the last time he has really crashed seriously other than 
the Tour de France in 2022 when he had that mild crash um, in the yellow jersey. But yeah, it does seem like there's a lot more crashes going on. Uh, Gibbard Tyson and his teammate crashing as well in another race. And another thing to touch on was that, um, which I, yeah, obviously I don't agree with that either. After the race, or after the crash, we were seeing Jonas being put into a stretch. It was the same with Remco in the Lombardia crash, uh, with the Fabio Jakobsen Tor Poland crash. All these crashes where you don't know if the ride is actually okay and it's just broadcast to the world. But yeah, I'm quite keen to know what you guys think of that. Let's get a debate started with that. Do you think it's right for these pictures to go out? Is the camera kind of like you show something, but you show everything? You can't just cherry pick. Is that the nature of the game? I don't know. But in terms of other things as well, we've also safety has been a massive issue this week with not only uh, the crashes happening since, well, even the Watt Van Aert crash, but also the Arnberg forest sector being changed because of the organizers and I think Adam Hansen as well, they want to make it safer. And many people, including Macho Van Der Poel, has been against this. But I mean, yeah, I don't know. I really don't know. I The last thing you want to see is riders crash. So yeah, it's uh, it's very, it's interesting to say the least. But in terms of Jonas being goal, it seems like it, it is better. It is good news. It wasn't as bad as it could have been. So an a absolutely dreadful crash and so many riders involved, as we said. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to blame anyone. And yeah, um, calls for people to get sacked or whatever. And uh, I don't I don't think that is a good way to do. But uh, yeah, uh, Bilbao as well said that they had changed, the, the organizers had made changes to limit the number of narrow roads in the race. So, I mean, at least the organizers were trying to do something and bumpy roads, descent, aggressive racing. It's a mean cocktail, but uh, yeah, that's basically it for this video. Make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and please do get involved in the chat down below. I'm really interested in this. There's some really good discussion points from the first video as well. And thank you to everyone who updated us all on uh, things that I missed out. But uh, yeah, with that, thank you very much for watching and I will see you around.